Okay, so then we will start. Um, good morning again. My name is Sebastian Wodetsky. I'm a consultant of Claudiax, and I would like to show you today uh, a few things how you can handle uh, the tenant management uh, in the Cloud Control Center for um, HANA. And um, so then directly we go to our agenda. So I will show you to show uh, how you can uh, create new databases, how you can import and register a database in the Cloud Control Center, and um, also how you can do uh, a backup. Um, so I will start now to show you with the, uh, how we can create a new database. Um, so if you log into go.cloudworks.com, you can open um, the Cloud Control Center. I have it open here already for you. And um, you will see then here on the left side uh, that you have here uh, the customers, where you have all your customers and also the, the tenants. Um, you have here uh, some possibilities what you can do in uh, in the tenant view. Uh, for the beginning now, we will create a new tenant. So then you have to click here on new. Uh, then you get a new um, wizard where you have uh, three options. You can create here new tenants and then you have also the possibilities to um, create from a package and create from backup. These two options are currently not supported by HANA. Uh, so now we have only the new option here. So we can say next. Then you have to select your customer. Uh, in our environment here, um, we have customers which are using SQL and customers which are using HANA. So we want to use HANA today. So then I will select my HANA user. Uh, customer, sorry. Um, so here we have uh, all service units which are released um, to um, to the to the HANA environment. So this is our HANA uh, unit. So if I would go back and would, for example, select a SQL uh, customer, then you can see here that we directly get the proper SQL service unit. In the case you have more than one service unit, for example, for SQL or HANA, you would directly see here more service units which you can select then. <clears throat> uh, so I will select my HANA uh, customer. I will select my HANA service unit now. Uh, so now I need to uh, give the, the to enter a tenant name. Um, so we enter here demo company Claudia X. Then we need to enter a database name. Uh, here it's important that you uh, only use uh, capital letters. And you start with a uh, letter at, this, uh, at the beginning, so no um, numbers. Um, so, for example, we here we can enter then a demo Claudiax one. So that would be the database name. Then we can enter here the the purpose, so we say demo. Uh, you can enter here contact person if you want, but these fields are all not mandatory. Um, then we have also phone and email. Then you have to define the local settings here. For example, I will take now Germany. Then you can define the chart of accounts. the base language of the database, in this case, for example, German, and then you can enter here a description. Uh, this description will also be used by the um, 
by the search field. So if you uh, want to find back your uh, database quickly, maybe uh, enter something what you uh, what you find back quickly. So then we say next year. <clears throat> now we have to define the posting periods. For example, this is now for 2017 peri period name, uh, sub periods, for example, months. We say next. Here you have the option to uh, uh, assign already users to, um, to the tenant. So you can click here and say, if you see here that we have here um, two users, which are assigned to the customer, users 31 and 32. Um, here you have to adjust the user code because uh, this field is limited. So you need to either you can enter um, a special user code uh, into this field. So this is the sub user field, user code field, or you, um, yeah. Can adjust it so you can see the the system user so that it's equal. Then you have to uh, select these two checkboxes when you add, want to add them, and also if you want to make them to power users, then you have to select these checkboxes here. And here below you see um, your own users. So the, uh, because we are logged in now as our um, yeah our C10,000.4, so we are the uh, in the we are the operators now. So that's the view you would also have if you have uh, your own cloud control center access in our environment. And here you can, for example, say I want to enter with the oper uh, as operator and do, I'm using the manager code and. Uh, as power user as well. So then we can say save. Then you have here the possibilities to um, assign the licenses already. So we can say and then we can say next. So you get a review here of all your details you have entered, and then we say next. And then it will take a moment, and then um, the system starts to create the tenant in the environment. So in the meantime, I will open a second view. Uh, I will go back to my tenants. So you can see here now that uh, the system is now busy to um, generate the new tenant. Um, I will show you the other buttons we have here. Um, so we have here uh, the register button. To this button, I will come back uh, later. Um, you have here the option to upgrade. This upgrade means that you can upgrade your um, database uh, to a different service unit. So let's say um, at the moment you have all your tenants hosted in the 9.2 patch level 7 HANA service unit, but um, we also provide you uh, in the future uh, maybe patch level 8. Uh, then you have the option uh, to say, okay, I want to upgrade my my databases directly to the new service unit. And then, um, yeah, you can use this upgrade button. Then you can select the, the service, uh, the, the databases. And then you can select the new service target unit and you can do an upgrade here. Of course, you will do a pre-upgrade test if uh, this is possible and then you can do it. Um, you have here, uh, the option to duplicate a database. So here you have to select the target unit again. Here would be also the option to um, yeah, duplicate your database um, 
to a new service unit if you have if you would have one here. But at the moment we have only one, so we say next. And now here you can see that we have here um, tenant name is the same as we have selected, and then with the market duplicate. And here, for example, then we can mark them as TO2. <clears throat> And we say next. And then you get an overview of all, yeah, all right, already assigned users to this um, database. You can see here that uh, two users already assigned to this uh, tenant. Uh, if you want to change here something, you can change it, or you can say just next. The system will inform you that uh, at this tenant you have also extensions, so add-ons are attached to this tenant. And um, he wants to, to know if you want to take over them or if you can you can uncheck them. And then we have here also the option now to yeah he starts now to um, duplicate this tenant. Okay, so there we have now an error message because it looks like there's one thing not correctly set up. Uh, I will go back to my first window. I will do a refresh here and we can check. So he's still, you can see here, he's still busy with um, provisioning the new tenant. I will go back to my other HANA uh, tenant. If you click on it, you will see here below the, the tenant details. You can see here all um, details of what is the status, the purpose, the description. And if you go to edit here, you have, for example, the possibility to say here, okay, I want to set this database in maintenance mode if, for example, your customer uh, will not use this database anymore or if you want to um, yeah, do some maintenance on the database side and you want to prevent uh, the customer to log in. Uh, here you have an overview about the licenses, so uh, which license is installed, which installation number, system number, and you see here also um, yeah, which type of license uh, this tenant is using professional, which add-on, uh, the um, ZAP add-ons and all this other, um, yeah, license types. Um, we have here the user management. You can see here, uh, yeah, which user are already assigned to it. You can assign new uh, users to the database if you want. You have here the possibilities to say assign license again, so you can give them licenses. <clears throat> and uh, which is also very interesting, more for um, existing database, so you have the option here, import users. If you click on this, You can see here um, the system will look into the um, into the uh, SAP database and will check okay which user do I have already um, in uh, in the database. So let's say you will take over a database from um, from an old on-premise system. You probably have already um, all the user codes, maybe with the name of the um, of the users. So then you are able to uh, map these with the um, yeah with the C users of uh, from from Cloudiax which you are using for the login. So then uh, you can map the um, yeah new C users with the um, existing user codes in SAP. And um, yeah, if you save then, you can see here that the system will take over then the the user code out of SAP directly. 
And of course, you have also the possibility to say here, remove. And then the assignment will go uh, away from this tenant. Um, we have here the extension tabs. Um, here you can assign add-ons to your uh, current tenant. Uh, if you click here on assign, you will get the list of all um, tenants, all add-ons, uh, which are available for um, your service unit. Um, if you want to have a new add-on, um, you need to send us this add-on first because we need to import it and make this available for your service unit. And then you will get it in yeah in your list here afterwards, and then you are able to assign yourself to um, to the tenant. So, for example, if I select SPO script, here we get then uh, and confirmation that it was added successfully, and you can see here now that we have uh, a second add-on at this uh, on this tenant. Um, so, uh, if you want to, uh, in some situations, uh, you have um, maybe the requirement that not all users want to see um, this add-on or want to have this in, in the auto-start mode. So, uh, there you have the option here to define um, in general, if you want to have it, automatic, manually, manual, mandatory, or disabled. You have also the option if you select when you when you select this, and then you will see on the right side these uh, yeah icon with these two persons, and then here if you click on it, you can define on user level the behavior of the add-on. So you can enable it, disable it, and set them for maybe for a few of them to automatic, and for the other ones on manual so there uh, with this you have the option to um, yeah make a more specific definition of uh, the add-on start okay um are there any questions so far Okay, uh, since uh, patch level eight of the Cloud Control Center, we have also the option here to check the login SPO users. So you can see here which users are currently working on the um, on the tenant. So for example, if you want to do some maintenance, you can directly see, okay, which users are logged in and um, you can inform them maybe to log out. <coughs> <clears throat> okay, um, if there are no questions here so far, uh, oh, one thing I forgot, we have, of course, here the uh, delete button. If you click on the delete button, you have, you will get then here the question if you want to delete only the tenant, so that means the tenant in the cloud control center, or if you want to delete as well the, um, yeah, the related database. So if you want to delete the, the related database as well, so also on the HANA server, the database will be gone. But some in, in sometimes uh, maybe you have the situation you only want to remove the the, the, the tenant. Uh, therefore, you can um, yeah just delete the tenant without removing the database. But in this case, I don't want to delete this. Still busy. Okay. Okay. Um, now I would like to show you how you can import and backup of a database. Um, let's say you get a um, database from uh, yeah one of your customers. Uh, therefore, we need 
to uh, go to the um, company share. So you will log into go.cloudx.com. You have here uh, your icons. Uh, one of them is uh, your company share. Sometimes it's also called just Explorer. So uh, then you will uh, redirect it directly to your um, yeah, company share folder. This folder is um, connected um, actually with all with your environment. So um, you can save here all your data. Uh, you see here now that I have here already some backups of SQL databases. I made a folder here for HANA backups. Um, I have here a database in it. And uh, so now I want to transfer this database over to um, to the HANA server. Um, therefore, first we need to um, map our uh, customer folder as, uh, as Windows Drive. So you can click here, right click on network, map network drive. Uh, you can select one of the drives here. And then customer and customer number. You, of course, you can also go via the tree here and say finish. Can do a quick check if we have it mapped now. Yes, it's mapped. Um, so you can, um, yeah, just copy paste it from your desktop into this folder. And then you can go back to your Cloudiax um, overview. And there we have an application which is called WinSCP. Uh, when you start it, you need to enter here the name of your HANA server. In our case, it's uh, the HANA server 5. Uh, when you want to know which um, HANA server you are working on right now, you can check this in your Cloud Control Center as well. If you go to the service units, uh, you can see here the overview of your service units. Uh, we are working right now on, on HANA. And you go here to software components. And then you can see here that we have here um, a database instance, and this is uh, HANA 5. So then you will, you need to enter the NDB ADM user. This will be provided from us to you when you um, get the environment and uh, password. Then we can say login. You have to confirm this. And then we are connected to the HANA server. On the left side, we have our local environment. So we can click here on the S drive. And now you see here, this is a, yeah, your company share folder. We have here our HANA backups folder. And on the right side, we have the HANA server. There we need to go to the root drive, root level first. And there we need to go to HANA, to the HANA folder and to the backup two folder. So this is always the folder uh, which we use for, um, yeah, for restore backups. And then you can just drag and drop it over. And now we need to um, extract this because it's a, it's a, a TGZ format, so it's um, compressed. So we, you can do a right click on it and say file custom commands and enter gzip, say OK. And, and you need to confirm it again here. And yes, we want to extract it directly in the backup to folder. So this will take a moment. And then we have here uh, an export and index folder. So these are always uh, um, yeah, part of the 
HANA structure if you do an export. Um, if you look into the index folder, you always can see also the name of the, the, of the schema. Uh, so if you want now to import this into the, uh, into the HANA, uh, yeah, database instance, because now it's only on the HANA server, so it's on the Linux server now, but not loaded into the database instance, we need to go to the uh, ZAP HANA Studio. It's another icon on our desktop, on our CloudX desktop. Then we need to map here. Come on. Our HANA server. So it's HANA server 5. Instant number is always uh, zero, 00. You can enter a description here. And then you need to enter the system user and the password. This um, credentials are also provided by us. Then we say finish and the system has added now the new HANA server to uh, the library. Um, so now we want to import the, um, the new schema. So therefore you have to do a right mouse click on the catalog, say open SQL console. And then uh, you need to use an import an import uh, SQL um, um, statement. It will look like this. So now we need to fill it out. Um, so if you don't have this uh, schema um, in SQL uh, statement, we, yeah provided to you, of course. Um, so we need to know the schema name. The schema name we can check in our WinSCP if we don't know it, so we can copy it from here. Then we need to know the location. We can also check WinSCP again. So we can see here it's um, HANA Backup 2. So you don't need to go into one of these folders. It's enough when you are on the on the level. So it's like this. And here you have now the possibility to rename the schema name. So for example, if you want to um, change the existing name, so this would be the existing name. And here is the new, um, yeah, the destination name, new schema name. And here we. Uh, change it, for example, to Claudiax. T01. So it's important here again that uh, yeah, you always use capital letters and don't use any uh, numbers at the beginning. Otherwise, you will get some problems with the schema name, and you don't. And then you have problems also to import them into the cloud control center. Um, so now our statement is correct, and then we can click here on execute. Then you will see here below this green um, yeah bar starts to run and we'll um, start now the import. You can, of course, click here. So it will take a moment now. Um, I will show you now uh, the other way around as well. So if you want to create a backup, um, you can 
go to WinSC, back to WinSCP. And for example, you want to create a backup of, um, let's check first here. We want to do a backup of the uh, A10000 SPO demo company. So there we can use the statement again. So this is now the export statement. So then we have to fill it out here. And here, so we can use the same folder name. And if we go to WinSCP, we need to create a new folder. Oops, sorry, a new folder here, new directory. We set it, uh, yeah, the same name as we have already find in our, in the HANA studio. Uh, we say set permissions here. And then you can do it like this, that you have uh, yeah, full permissions for everything. And then when we start it now, then you can, uh, yeah, the system will export the, the tenant schema. So he's still busy. Should be finished soon. In the meantime, we can check if our new tenant we created at the beginning is uh, created uh, successfully. Yes. So here, so if I do a refresh now, so we have our demo company now here. Um, you can see here on the user management, it's directly. Uh, use are directly assigned uh, yeah, no extensions we can assign here an extension if we want yeah okay um, so let's check again so now the import is ready, so you get an, an, if the import works fine, you will get a message that the import uh, success, uh, was successfully executed. Uh, now we can go back to our um, <clears throat> um, HANA studio, no, sorry, Cloud Control Center. Um, you have here the possibility to say register. If you click on it, uh, we will get, get back to this registration wizard. We say next. Uh, you have to select a customer. So it's an HANA customer again. We have our service unit here. And now you can see here directly that uh, the database is now, um, the database name is now, uh, you, you have a pull, pull down menu here where you can select uh, yeah, not registered uh, databases yet. So we have here our SPO demo database. You can define here a tenant name. <coughs> and um, so the system will then tell you already, okay, this is a localization, so it's German. You will see here that we have uh, a tenant version. So it's at the moment, it's patch level six. And we have added this to the uh, service unit of patch level seven. You will see here that um, yeah, an upgrade is necessary. Um, so then we have here the option to say the purpose of this database again. It's a demo database. And we can say enter here DB. Our description. It 
So then you can already assign users here again. And um, for example, yourself as manager. Possible. And yes, so if you say would say now or next, then uh, the system would start to uh, add this um, the tenant to the um, new service unit and would start an upgrade. But this would take now about an hour, so I'm not going to uh, start this upgrade now. Um, the last thing I would like to show you is how you can create a backup. So I had prepared this already. So on my second tab in the HANA Studio, and we have here our our export statement. And if we click here on the execute again, oh, I made a mistake. Um, Somewhere I have a typo, probably. Question. Ah, here. We don't have a rename. So if you click on export, no, now it, it, it works. So now the system starts to export the um, the database um, to the predefined folder. So if we go to our WinSCP again, and we start checking here, you can see he already started to create the structure here. So it will take a moment and then you have, uh, yeah, and backup of your database um, which you can then of course move back to the um, to your um, company share folder where you can then download it from directly to your local desktop <clears throat> so, so it's already executed well it was very quick um, then you can say here file custom So you can uh, make it as a TGZ file again. So it's important that you, before you copy it over to um, your company share or to your Windows system, that you uh, compress this structure again. Otherwise, you will destroy the um, the HANA uh, file structure, and then you will have many issues later on to restore this um, again to your to your other system or let's say on premise on, on premise so um, it's important that you always uh, compress these files before you start moving it around <clears throat> yes so that was actually um, everything what i wanted to show you uh, in the hana uh, tenant world of the ccc um, do you have any questions
So um, this video will be also uh, yeah coming to our um, YouTube channel. So um, if you want to uh, look into it again, uh, yeah, there you will find it then probably tomorrow. And um, if there are no any other questions, um, thank you very much and have a nice day. Bye.